absolutely central to my training people for evangelism is teaching them that God is sovereign. He is king of this world. So in the Acts of the Apostles, I mean, Acts chapter 18, it looks dreadful. I mean, there's Priscilla and Aquila. They've been thrown out of Rome. They're in Corinth. They must have thought mm -hmm. life's over. And yet they then find themselves at, at the heart of Paul's mission, pushing out from Corinth. And then later on, the synagogue ruler, Paul gets thrown out of the synagogue. The guy in the next door house says, well, you can come here. So what we learn from that is that keep speaking. The Lord's with you. He is sovereign. He's in control. But it looks like it's mayhem. But don't stop speaking because right. he has a plan. Right. So I find that the absolutely essential to giving people the confidence to keep speaking is realizing God's in control. He is giving us these opportunities. He is calling people to himself. But my goodness, it doesn't feel like that sometimes. Sometimes it feels like mayhem. And I must say, I there were times when I was at that boarding you school. You were the creator of mayhem yourself. Well, I, I there were times at that boarding school when I thought I am the loneliest young man in this country. Mm. And mm. and I, I, it took me a long time. I You know, I wished early on I'd been taught about God's sovereignty. Mm. Mm. You've written a book called Honest Evangelism, How to Talk About Jesus Even When It's Tough. And you speak that as as as, and you wrote that uh, as an evangelist yourself. I, I'll tell you, Rico. The thing that I most appreciate is you're saying it is not always easy to share your faith. No, well, Charles, I call it honest because I think there's been a lack of honesty on two fronts. One is we're not being honest with a non-Christian about the nature of judgment, about the fact of hell, about the reality of mm -hmm. the transience of life, mm -hmm. about the uniqueness of Jesus dying on the cross. That's the only way I can get right with God. So we've got to be honest with the non-Christian, but also we're not being honest with Christians about saying, this is tough. As we speak of these truths, the only place for sex is within marriage between a man and a woman. And if you want to come to Christ, then we need to repent of our sin in that area. As we speak of these truths, we are going to hit tremendous aggression and hostility. What's interesting is we'll also hit hunger. We'll also have mm -hmm. some people who say when we've crossed the pain line and 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 said something straight about Jesus, you know, I, I, I think it's a good thing that at the end of our lives we're all accountable to him. When, when we say these things, we can hit real hunger and people can then really want to know more. We might hit hostility. But what I've written the book to try and persuade people to do is to say, look, please cross the pain line befriend people, ask the tough question, and and you may well hit amazing hunger that you're just not expecting. And you're seeing that happen in England, too. Yeah, remarkably. I think there's at, at England, two things are happening at the same time at the moment. There's tremendous hunger and there's tremendous hostility. And you don't really know which you're going to get. But there are a lot of quiet conversations going on where people are saying, I've got no peace. What do I do? And I'm praying that Christians have the confidence to say, Come to Christian Explored. Come and come and look at Jesus. Come, come and look at Jesus in Mark's Gospel. Or let's just meet individually together. We can look at who Jesus is, why he came, what it means to follow him in Mark. But it's it's giving the church family and other church families around Britain the confidence just to say, look, confidentially, intimately, let's just get the Bible open and have a look. Before we go public on anything, while we just look at your questions, yes. ask them and, yes. and let you look at Jesus. Mm -hmm.